welcome to the stage, Mr. Daytime Nighttime himself, Keith Hampshire, ladies and gentlemen. Throughout his over 40-year career, Keith Hampshire has been a successful disc jockey, recording artist, and announcer for radio and television commercials. And it all began in England in 1945. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, little boy was raised in Calgary, Alberta, after uh, immigrating from England. Um, was a real bad little bugger, and his uh, mother used to uh, take him to church on Sunday, and he used to get in trouble in church, so she put him in the choir. One night on a dare, he and a bunch of friends go down to a folk club in Calgary, Alberta, and um, it's amateur night. So my friends urge me to get up and sing, and I say, but I don't have a guitar, I don't, you know. I sing a cappella, what the hell. So I did my three tunes, they liked me, I did two more, and then next thing you know, I become known in Calgary as the a cappella singer. Then I found out that you could make more money singing rock and roll. So I um, joined a rock and roll band. I had to go back to night school to pick up one of my marks because my parents really wanted me to go to university. So I decided to go down to the unemployment office and see if I could get a job. I went down, I filled out the resume, she looked at it and she said, oh, you're singing a band. I said, yeah. She said, uh, how would you like a job at the local radio and television station um, as uh, an apprentice cameraman? And I said, yeah, sure, wouldn't mind at all. Go up, I get the job. I'm an apprentice cameraman, and I'm learning all about, you know, behind the scenes stuff. However, it turns out that I'm not really very good at it. They said, well, why don't we move them into the radio section? And I start spinning discs and, and spinning um, tapes and this, that, and the other, and uh, I'm doing the all-night show on the weekends. That was one of the gigs I was doing. It was pre-recorded. I just play the guy's voice. This is the top of the town in Calgary, and now here's Peggy Lee. Is that all there is? And then after a while, he got tired of um, recording the tape, the guy that was doing it. So he said, why don't you do the show? Nobody listens anyway. So I started doing the uh, all-night show on the weekends. Despite his newly found success in Calgary, Keith decided to return to his native England, where he landed a job as a pirate disc jockey. Go back to London, I'm staying with my aunt and uncle, and my aunt listens to a pirate radio station called Radio Caroline, and I'm listening to it, and there's guys on the air there that, um, they don't have the deep, rich, ballsy, North American voice. They are just guys that are on the air, having fun, playing great music, and it was the music that I loved anyway. And I thought, boy, I, I might fit in. I don't have the big, deep, ballsy voice, and uh, maybe I could, I could get away with it. The pirate ships broadcast from international waters off the coast of Britain and were a constant thorn in the side of the British establishment. We were fighting the government. We were inaccessible. We were on a boat in the middle of the English Channel. We lived on the boats for, for two weeks at a time. Then we had a week off in London. The way I try and describe it is this. You take a guy from Canada, you take a guy from the States, you take a guy from South Africa, Australia, Northern England, Southern England, and they all love modern music or rock and roll or whatever you want to call it. You put them on a boat in the English Channel, you give them the greatest music ever recorded, and you say, you're a disc jockey, play the records, have fun with it, don't be naughty. And that was it. And just before I go on the air for my very first show, you know, all the lads come up and they go, oh, you're going to be great, mate, you know, we're really looking forward to hearing your show on the air, you know, go on, break a leg, do a great job, you know, you're going to be fabulous. Everyone's, you know, giving you the, the, the old build-up. Meanwhile, I'm, I'm, I'm a bag of nerves, I'm just a mess. And Tom Lodge, who was the one that hired me, he puts his arm around my shoulder and he says, Keith, he says, don't worry about a thing. He says, there's eight million people out there, they're going to love you. <laughs> eight million. I just about crapped my drawers. When the British government outlawed pirate radio in August 1967, Keith came back to Canada and applied for a DJ job at several Toronto radio stations. I went to each of them with my demo tape and said, listen, I just come back from England. I'm, I'm a pirate and I've been famous, give us a job. So I went to CKFH, worked there for a number of years, and through that association, I met a fellow by the name of Scott Richards, who was the bass player for David Clayton Thomas and the Shays. 
And uh, he said, Keith, I've heard you sing, man. You're, you're a great singer. Why aren't you pursuing a recording career? And I said, well, who do I, who do I talk to about that? He says, I'll introduce you to somebody. That somebody turned out to be singer, songwriter, producer Bill Meisner, who'd previously been a member of the Poppers. We went in the studio and we made a record. We got a deal through RCA, and my first single came out on RCA. RCA decided after the first year they didn't want to play anymore. But Billy and I were still really good friends, and Billy said, let's go in the studio and, and do some demos. So I said, I got an idea. Why don't we do some songs that I'd heard when I was in England on Radio Caroline that were hits in Britain, but were never hits in North America. And he said, well, give me a for instance. So I played him a bunch of stuff, and he said, wow, this is, this, you're right. This uh, got hit written all over it. So we went in and we recorded a demo version of a song called Each and Every Day. It was written by Mike Hug, the uh, drummer for Manfred Mann. And it sounded great. And Billy said, so what do you want me to do with it? I said, well, take it to A&M first, then take it to Capitol, then take it to the, 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 and see if we can get anybody to, to bite. A&M Records bit first. So we went back in, we put some horns on it, put some singers on it, this, that, and the other, changed the name of the song to Daytime Nighttime, released it, damn it all, if it wasn't a hit. I was as blown away as anybody. I wasn't ready for that. Daytime, nighttime, and the thing I say any time of day, and she's mine. There's no doubt about, she can't do without my love each and every day. She looks good, looks good, feels good, feels good. Walking down the street, everyone with me says we should go along. And all of a sudden, the phone's ringing, people want me to do this, that, and the other. Go in the studio and do an album. One song really stood out on the album, and that was The First Cut is the Deepest. The first cut is the deepest, baby, I know. The first cut is the deepest, cause when it comes to It was the follow-up to uh, Daytime Nighttime. It came out in Canada. It went to number one on the RPM chart, top 10 in Australia. We were released all over the world. Keith hit the record charts a third time with Big Time Operator, a song originally recorded in England by Zoot Money's Big Roll Band. While Keith continued to record, he also began acting, which quickly attracted the attention of legendary TV comedians Wayne and Schuster. The reason they got me to do the show was um, one of the very first things I did when I went freelance was I auditioned for um, a stage review, a comedy review at the St. Lawrence Centre in Toronto. So uh, through that I, I got the review called You'd Better Believe It. Johnny and Frank, Wayne and Schuster, came and saw the show and thought I was funny in it. So for two, three years I was in every single Wayne and Schuster special, and they'd always give me, a, you know, a bit to do as the as the young one. And you know, the funny thing is, that I, I still see them on the Comedy Network, the old Wayne and Schuster shows that they've, you know, cut together and, and put in. And there I am, 30, 40 years ago, and it's just, it's scary. I had hair. <laughs> The Wayne and Schuster appearances helped Keith land a weekly CBC music and comedy show called Music Machine. Before I got into the recording end of things, I'd, I'd done some comedic acting and whatever. And so I went and auditioned, and because of my Wayne and Schuster background, and because I'd had the, you know, the three hit records, I got the gig. Well, we did the first four shows with uh, comedy sketches and this, that, and the other. And the guy who was running the CBC at the time went to his kid and he says, so what do you think of the show? And his kid said, uh, well, the music's great, but the comedy sucks. <laughs> so just like that, the comedy was gone. It was strictly a music show. When the Music Machine television show ended, Keith looked ahead at his future and didn't particularly like what he saw. 
There came a point when I had to make a decision. I had the music thing happening, I had the records, I had the television show, and all of a sudden uh, the record companies wanted me to put a band together and go on the road. I sort of came to a crossroads. I had to decide what was I going to do. And I had this beautiful wife, and I had this beautiful young baby boy. I had this beautiful farm in the country, and I didn't want to spend the rest of my life in a bus with a bunch of drugged out hippies. So I backed away from the music business, and I started doing radio and television commercials. It's time you tried McCain Tasty Taters. They're crunchy on the outside, tender and golden on the inside, things like that. And uh, basically, that's what I've been doing for the last 35 or so years. All oh, set me free. All oh, set me free. All oh, set me free. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Keith Hampshire. Thank you very much.